Hey everyone, my name is Samantha and welcome back to Blacklisted Technology. Hello everyone, today we have Ana here with us, who is a senior software engineer with over 10 years of experience. So Ana, for our first question today, how did you get into technology? Well, um, my sister actually uh, introduced me and we made like a calculator program when I was like 12 or 13 years old and I was pretty hooked. Although I really didn't understand what was going on. She probably had to like figure it out most of it. But I was like, oh my gosh, how does this work? It's magic. Mm -hmm. So after that, I got into robotics in high school. Mm -hmm. And I just knew I wanted to do something in technology. So there you have it. Wow, that's wonderful. Okay, Anna. So for our second question, how do you recommend moving up in technology, especially as a woman? Yeah, so um, great question. Um, honestly, there aren't as many uh, differences between men and women uh, in terms of getting there as we'd like to think. I would it basically my number one thing is don't feel self-conscious. Really, just be who you are because actually your individuality and and you know whatever diversity that you bring to the team is actually like um, a breath of fresh air, if you will, because then it's more exciting and interesting. So if you have a different personality like I use humor that's my thing so just be that person and then at the same time you want to build a bridge with every single person on your team so if you if they talk a certain way don't mimic exactly what they say but at least like kind of start to use their language so that you can really connect with them and then like always be reading and committing code like no matter what you know you can learn a lot from uh, everybody else around you. Like I love to do uh, code reviews or merge request, uh, you know, reading all that different code because it's like, it's kind of like English. There's a lot of different ways to say things and do things. So I always learn something new every day by doing that. So just do a little bit each day and be yourself and um, build a bridge. That's my three tenants. That's great. So did you find code meetups useful in your journey? Yeah, you know, um, it can be a little bit tough to find the right type of meetup because a lot of them, they kind of just focus on the story and not necessarily um, like doing, like learning by doing. That's my thing. Like it's really tough. Like I can't even learn from lectures in college and I'm amazed that you can do that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Miss uh, 4.0 over here. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like uh, you want to find ones that are hands-on, like a really good one is Women Who Code. Mm -hmm. it, we yeah. have a ch Phoenix chapter and uh, you attended a couple of yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> it was actually really wonderful because I was able to meet other women that are in technology that have similar interests because especially when I first moved here, I didn't know anyone. Mm. So um, it was <laughs> nice to go to this code meetup and actually meet people who can be long-term acquaintances and even mentors in the future. So I found that really helpful. Yeah. And I mean, hands-on learning really helps because then you actually see, and uh, it's not all th theoretical, I guess mm -hmm. is what I mm -hmm. would say. So Anna, I know that you just got promoted as team lead. So congratulations. I am yeah. so proud of you. Long <laughs> overdue. Anna, if you don't know her already, she is the first person to always offer help and she's always the first person to lead a group, which I find is amazing. So as a team leader now, what do you think it means to be a great leader? Wow, um, great question. Man, a great leader? Um, you know, there's a lot of okay leaders that I know. <laughs> great leader, um, you know, in inspires and has a heart, uh, leads with their heart, um, and is always willing to you know, lend a hand. And I like the idea of a servant leader. Um, you know, uh, I think also just really doling out the credit where credit is due. Like, uh, you know, if somebody should really shine on your team, really pump up the recognition and, mm -hmm. and uh, call them out and say, hey, you know, uh, we can't do this by ourselves. I mean, yeah. even if you're, especially if you're not like one of the worker bees mm -hmm. and you're, um, you know, I, I mean, as a worker bee for most of my career, <laughs> I really appreciate that. So, mm -hmm. and then also just like, um, being real and kind of not political with your with mm -hmm. your people that are mm -hmm. under you and just saying yeah. like look you can come to me at any time you can call me and rant if you want yeah. like and I'll understand like because mm -hmm. I've been there and or I might be feeling the exact same way that mm -hmm. you are and then you know but I just ask that after we get done ranting we talk about solutions mm -hmm. you know and, and then always being being the person that brings solutions whether you're 
um, you know, a worker bee or you're the, uh, you know, in leadership mm -hmm. is really important because mm -hmm. then, you know, if you're just always complaining and yeah. not bringing solutions to the table, then they're like, okay, well, let's not include that person. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of a subtle thing that starts to happen. So that's, you know, super important. Mm -hmm. No, I love what you said about creating solutions because I think a lot of times people can just get on rants and maybe get in a negative cycle. But I think what really breaks that is by finding solutions. Be like, hey, I don't like what's going on. So how am I going to change this? Or what can we do together to change this? Yeah. So I think that that's really important. You know, um, queuing off of that, mm -hmm. I just realized, you know, I was talking about the personality thing. Yeah. You, I think one of your qualities is that uh -huh. you're like really bubbly and like excited about things. And I think <laughs> that you. also, like if you were leading a team, yeah. that would be super helpful, you mm -hmm. know? just bright and happy, mm -hmm. not to like, you know, when everybody's first getting in and they're like yeah. getting their first cup of yeah. coffee, but you know, just really 100%. amping up the team and saying, hey, we're, we can do this, you know? No, 100%. <laughs> and I've seen with different leaders that I've interviewed in the past that what makes the difference is when they have a high energy to give to their team, because maybe, you know, if a manager or leader is always tired and kind of grumpy, that's going to rub off onto the team. But for if sure. you have a leader who is always on 10 and ready for <laughs> anything and is always hyping up people, especially people who may, you know, be behind a little and need to catch up, that's what makes a great leader, being able to bring your team up totally. with your own energy and just yeah. with your own enthusiasm. So I think that's a really great thing. Yeah, I've been on some teams where... Uh, they were like, if the boss was having a bad day, everybody yeah. was having a bad day. <laughs> but at the same yeah. time, you know, if you uh, if you bring that energy, everybody's going to be like, okay, we can do this, people, yeah. you know? Even yeah. if, like, Prod has a problem or is down or something, mm -hmm. like, everybody who just remains calm and connected and says, hey, don't worry, don't yeah. stress. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If the, if the leaders are, like, all nervous and oh, panicking, no, no, no. oh, yeah. no, that, that I doesn't think, work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's really uh, useful as a leader to never quite show that you're nervous because I think that's just going to rub off onto everyone. And if you are nervous, that's okay, but kind of take a step back and reevaluate the situation and be like, hey, I need to be put together so my team doesn't get worried about the situation and that they stay calm. Yeah. So I think that's another really useful. Tip. You just got to breathe, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for our last question today, I was just wondering, what do you do when things aren't going well? Yeah, so um, it really depends. So if I'm like a junior engineer, um, I'm not going to ass assert myself too much because I know that we've got the brilliant minds working on it, you know, yeah. and they're heads down. Um, and I'm going to learn as much as I can about what they're trying to do. So I'm not going to ask them questions about how they're doing it in the moment. Cause like, if it's like a prod issue, yeah. like things are going, like the, the product is down, uh, where all the clients are supposed to be using it. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's less of an intense situation, then yeah, I'm going to ask them how they're yeah. doing, um, how they're solving it. Cause it's might be new for me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I'm an intermediate engineer, um, I'm going to be in that war room with that yeah. person and like really hashing it out, talking with them, saying, okay, what are all of the options? You know, they've, they've named two, let's, uh, maybe I have an idea and I, I throw that into the pool, but then objectively, um, the whole team will decide. And then I just have to like commit to that decision, whether I think mine is better or not, you know, and sometimes, um, somebody has a great idea and I was like, oh, wow, I didn't even yeah. think about that. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, and if it's an interpersonal, then, um, you know, that goes back to building a bridge mm -hmm. and, um, you know, some people are just introverted and they don't really like yeah. to talk. And yeah. sometimes that's weird because I like to talk to people. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though I am quite an introvert myself, mm -hmm. I'm outgoing. No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay, so. <laughs> anyway, back to the thing, but, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, like, yeah, I feel like I'm, more extroverted than the rest of my team yeah. so yeah I, that can be a little off-putting but you mm -hmm. just kind of go with the flow mm -hmm. and uh, yeah you know some personalities are uh, a little stronger than others and mm -hmm. also it's really important to realize that teams uh, hopefully you've joined the team when everybody's like all aligned and mm -hmm. you know working together yeah. but there's it's important to realize that if you're on a new team there's uh, the four phases of software um, teams that uh, I forget what it's called, but yeah, it's uh, four phases, storming, norming, mm -hmm. 
performing and I think there's one more I missed the other one but yeah it's like you they, at first they are just getting started and they're like figuring out where their yeah. bumps are and then after that they start to really get it and then they get like feisty because they're like mm -hmm. one person wants to lead it one way and another person yeah. might want to lead it another way yeah. but then you know there's norming and performing and uh everybody's like starting to get the hang of it mm -hmm. and you know the foundation might be laid in the platform mm -hmm. so there's like established patterns of uh, what to do in the code base mm -hmm. that yeah. you can kind of grab and go and uh, yeah so then that's really when it's fun but just remember if there's a lot of like stress going on it might just be that they're not used to working together and mm -hmm. just ride the wave ride the wave yeah <laughs> No, I think that's great advice, especially for people who are just getting on new teams due to COVID, because you need to understand when you first get on a team, not everything is going to be perfect. You're going to have communication barriers and you're going to kind of bump heads with people until you understand how to communicate effectively as a team. So I think that's extremely important to realize that there's steps that you have to go to in order to achieve that. So that was really great. Yeah. You know, that reminds me, just one more thing, yeah. uh, you know, there's some people who like to give you an entire monologue uh, yeah. when you ask them a question, yeah. and do not be afraid to interrupt. I know it kind of yeah. sucks at first to get used to, but it's really worth it because then you don't waste their time or your time yeah. and say, oh, actually, all I needed was this. Sometimes it makes yeah. sense to get the whole context, yeah. so that's good, but I used to have a mentor uh, that I was learning from who would just go on a whole essay rant thing of, yeah. like about this certain problem. And I was like, I actually just needed this part. And then, yeah. you know, I, I could have saved so much time. So that's what I wish I would have done. So you guys get the benefit of it, not me. No, I yeah. that's great advice, especially because it's hard to, um, you know, stop them and say, hey, actually, I just needed this one part. So by you as a senior engineer saying that to younger engineers, it's extremely useful because then they're more likely to have that confidence to be like, actually, I just needed help with one part of the system. Yeah, so, just speak up, you know, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. it can be, I'd, I'd actually err on the side of speaking up more than um, not like, mm -hmm. because a lot of people get nervous, but the more that you do that, you might rub some people the wrong way in the process, but you'll learn quickly that way mm -hmm. versus not voicing it. And, you know, then also people understand that you're listening and trying to understand, even yeah. if you're not quite there with them. And they're going to be, you know, patient with you about that, yeah. especially when you're getting started. No, I think that's great. So thank you so much for being here, Anna. You've offered so much <laughs> valuable advice, especially for engineers that are just getting into the field of technology. So is there any final notes that you would like to add? Well, um, I'm working on a course right now, uh, and, and I wanted to put that out there. The name of it is called Solve Stack. I'm going to have it up in the next couple weeks, and I have some mentees who are already learning it. So um, it's basically, stay tuned. It's the, the way that I wish I had learned programming uh, from the beginning with all of the knowledge that you would be learning on the job that you should already know when you're entering the job anyway, in my opinion. But people aren't doing this part. So I just wanted to make you guys aware uh, that you could be a lot more well-rounded when you come onto the job yeah. and not have to flounder as much as I did. <laughs> so stay tuned yeah <laughs> no i think that's great i can't wait to use it as well and go through the course and see all that it has to offer because i know especially for me when i first learned how to code it was extremely difficult but once i heard a little bit more about what you're doing i'm like huh i wish i had that. so <laughs> yeah. i can't wait as well so thank you so much for being here today again yeah thank mm -hmm. you yeah you're welcome all of you and uh happy coding <laughs>